Do you want to learn how to configure the open telemetry collector to forward traces to AWS X-Ray? Yes? Then you are in the right place. In this video, I will change an existing open telemetry collector configured to send traces to the standard output to also send them to AWS X-Ray. As a heads up, this video is part of a series. If you want to recap what I built so far before watching this video, check in the description below for the link to the previous episodes. Let's get started. So I'm going to stop the execution one more time of the collector because we're going to change the configuration file and stop the execution of the microservice. And then we're going to use QDeveloper for uh, updating our collector configuration to send to X-Ray. So uh, I'm going to actually start with the slash dev again because this is going to be like a f uh, feature generation. We want to QDeveloper to modify our existing code one more time. So our prompt this time is going to be modify uh, the open telemetry collector configuration file to forward the received data to AWS X-Ray. Make sure to also update the Docker Compose file to because I remember here that the for the for the execution strategy, right? So the container is going to use the configuration file of the open telemetry collector. But for the container to be able to reach AWS X-Ray, it needs to it needs credentials, it needs authorization, right? Because it, it is a service from AWS. So somehow you need to provide your credentials, right? Uh, to contact with service. So uh, the way you this can be done, and I'm gonna I'm, hopefully Q developer is gonna generate for us. But if not, you can actually uh, provide your credential as environment variables. But but let's see how how it comes from uh, Q developer. So update the Docker profile to provide the AWS credentials. Right. So I'm gonna hit enter and let's wait for the plan that's going to be generated for this. Uh, let's review the, the plan that was created here by Q Developer. All right, so it's going to add AWS x to the exporter session. That sounds about right. Update the Docker Compose to provide the region access key. Yep, I'm going to actually uh, accept the code generated and let's see how that goes. So here are the recommended files. Let's click on insert code and see how that goes. Uh, I'm going to close the session for now. Thank you, AWS, Amazon Q developer. Um, so the exporter session was updated successfully. As you can see here, we're using the logging and AWS X-Ray. So this is possible and uh, open telemetry. So you can uh, create like a composite implementation of multiple exporter if you want. So is, is it an array that, as you can see here, I'm going to leave it, um, but I could I could remove it. But the most important part here is that we're using the AWS X-Ray extension that, like I, like I mentioned before, is only available on AWS distribution of the Open Telemetry Collector. So that's why um, previously, when we were uh, doing that part of the implementation for creating the Docker Compose file, I explicitly make sure to use uh, AWS distribution of Open Telemetry Collector. Right, so this sounds correct, right? So that was amazing for, for an Amazon Q developer. Let's review the Docker Compose file. So we're, that's great. It created the environment uh, session here for the Docker Compose because this is how you specify your own environment variables. Uh, and it's providing as the region, the key, and the access key. The only thing that I'm not enjoying very much here is that uh, it suggested that I pass my AWS credentials as environment variables, which is not necessarily a best practice here for, for this. So I'm going to do a slightly change, a manual change here, so I can simply kind of... a uh, map because I have my credentials stored on my dot slash dot AWS folder here. 
uh, because I have the AWS CLI installed. So I'm going to do a mapping of that volume so it can provide to the container the, the, So this is um, the, the, the binding that is expected for us to bind uh, my credentials to the container credentials. So with that change in place, let's execute the container one more time. So let's bounce it, DC down. Uh, so let's execute one more time. And then obviously check the logs to see if everything is working as expected. Let's bounce the microservice one more time, go run main, and then let's now send a couple more invocations to the microservice. So we're going to send one here, get, All right. And then I'm going to send another and another. So three invocations to our REST API. Now it seems to be, at least we're not seeing any errors on the collector. So I'm assuming everything is working as expected. Uh, the, the beauty of this exercise of this implementation so far is that you were able to see an entire implementation with real world problems that rise, right? So uh, that, that's one of the things that we, we, we value here at AWS. We're not necessarily providing you with an example where everything works perfectly. And then you start like bringing this to your ward and said, okay, it's not that perfect as was shown on the video. So I hope that uh, you as the viewer of this content appreciate this type of approach that we're providing to you. So now that we've seen that everything is working as expected, let's go to AWS X-Ray to see our traces there. So we're here on AWS console, and then let's go to CloudWatch. It's, as, you, as you may know, AWS X-Ray is a subcomponent of CloudWatch. And in this case, we go to X-Ray traces, and I'm going to click traces, and then we have four traces received, as you can see here. So I'm going to run the query to see those traces. And then I'm going to pick one trace here randomly, uh, the last one. And then we have this kind of a graph representation of the client invocation invoking the slash hello, which is the endpoint where the microservice was exposed. And then here we can see the overall tracing implementation, which is beautiful, right? So. Right off the bat, you can see here that when the invocation hit the endpoint slash hello, it call this function called hello, and then this function below subsequently call this sub function called build response. If we go back to our code, you are going to see that this is all true because in our main.go, uh, the main function register a uh, router for the hello function, right? So we're providing this middleware that kind of a uh, uh, wraps around the execution of the function and do the tracing exercise. So if you go to the hello function itself, right, you're going to see that there's the span that was created for for the invocation of the hello, and then the hello function calls the build response function, right? So this is the nested invocation, and remember when we were creating the first step of the code instrumentation, we explicitly asked an Amazon Q developer to generate the instrumentation code using that approach of following the execution of the, the entire execution of nested functions, right? And then uh, build response is essentially the last mile of this code execution. That, that's the function that actually build the response and replies with reload word. So this is our entire implementation all done thanks to Amazon Q Developer. So what do you think? Amazon Q Developer was really amazing in assisting us in the creation of the code and configuration files required for us to implement this observability use case. I highly encourage you to continue your experimentations with Amazon Q Developer for whatever other use cases you need to develop. I hope you that is going to help you jumpstart a lot of your development efforts, as well as taking a little bit of the effort from your shoulders so you can concentrate in more valuable tasks. There's never been a better time to be a builder.